Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. It is the job of all law enforcement agencies, and of the Highway Patrol in particular, to maintain a high standard of safety on our nation's roads. It is the obligation of conscientious citizens to exercise care in choosing and maintaining dependable, safe driving automobiles. On the morning of May 15th, two young people purchased an old car, apparently the best they could afford, from a local used car dealer. But this was no ordinary young couple. The man was Steve Talbot, two-time loser on counts of armed robbery. The woman, his wife, Audrey. Her last mailing address was Tehachapi, a woman's prison in California. But Talbot wasn't satisfied. He had to pull one more job, and the car was part of his plan. The Talbots could have afforded a better car, for the suitcase clutched by Audrey Talbot contained $20,000 in cash and gems, the take from Talbot's most recent holdup. Well, the bus should be here in a few minutes. Steve, don't do it. What? Well, why push our luck? We're free and clear now. We've got money and a chance to enjoy it together. Let's both go to the airport now together. Honey, just one more job. This one's a cinch. That old jeweler is as dependable as his clocks. Nothing can go wrong. Anything can go wrong. Suppose the police should trace this car. This is a legitimate car, honey. The only thing that can happen to it is when it's found abandoned at the airport. And suppose someone sees you. That's another reason you can't go with me. It's harder to identify a man than it is a man and a woman together. But the best thing you can do is get out to the airport and make sure of our reservations. And if I'm late, get reservations on the next flight out, wherever it goes. And if you're too late? Honey, stop it. I'll be there. Just wait for me. Wait for you? The last time I waited nearly two years. Please, Steve. I don't want to go to prison again. Is this job really worth it? Please. Now, look, it's all settled. I'll see you at Clovis Field at noon. Stewart was a victim of habit. At exactly nine o'clock every morning, he opened his jewelry store. The dusting and arranging of displays took half an hour. And at about 9.30 every morning, Henry Stewart opened his safe, a fact which Talbot, a methodical criminal, had carefully noted. Don't move, Pop, and you won't get hurt. Here, load this up. Quick, come on! at Stewart's Jewelry over in Midville. She found the owner in the back on the floor. What is it, robbery? I don't know. I couldn't understand her very well. She mentioned something about a safe. She sounded pretty hysterical. Get the nearest unit over there right away. Have a lab man and photographer join him. Hurry it up. I'll meet you downstairs. Crime lab. Steve Talbot drove upstate on Highway 30, unaware that the highway patrol had already begun to move into action.
presume to call in? Yes, sir. This is Mrs. Williams. Where's Stuart? The ambulance just took him in. Dead. Whatever was here, he got it all. Mrs. Williams? Yes, sir. Anybody here in the shop when you came in? No, but there was a man coming out just as I was passing by. A, a young, good-looking man, about 35, wearing a brown suit, I think. Well, it, it might have been gray, I'm not sure. Well, he was carrying a briefcase. But all I really saw was a scar on his face. A, it was on his left cheek. I'll radio headquarters and have him run a check on everybody with a scar on their left cheek. Is something going? Right. Anything else? Well, he, he brushed right by me, almost knocked me over. He got in a car and drove away. Well, it was kind of funny, him driving away so fast, and also I thought I'd come inside and, and look. And I found poor Mr. Stewart lying there. Did you happen to notice this man's car? No. No, I didn't. I didn't pay much attention. I, I mean, I didn't think there was anything really wrong. Why should anyone want to hurt poor Mr. Stewart? When there's money involved, a lot of people get hurt. Was there anyone with this man, Mrs. Williams, or waiting in the car? No, I'm, I'm sure of that. There's no report from headquarters about that description yet. But if there's any prints on that safe, we shouldn't have any trouble running down this thief. We're not looking for a thief. We're looking for a murderer. <laughs> Let's get back to headquarters. You get on the radio, huh? Right. Talbot's description was radioed to headquarters. Audrey Talbot's fears had been confirmed. Talbot's carefully planned holdup had gained new and far more serious proportions. Talbot's description was being flashed on all the local television and radio stations. Talbot himself was about 35 miles outside of town on Highway 30, another 60 miles from the airfield where he was to meet Audrey. Mug shots and records of three suspects that fit the description. Give me a look. Steve Talbot. Luke Minnick, Tom Lawson. They all fit except Lawson. He's on vacation. Alcatraz. There's nothing we can do to get a report on the fingerprints. Matthews. Who? Come again. A bishop. All right, send him in. Says he knows something about the Stewart case. Mr. Matthews? Yeah, that's right. My name's Bishop, Al Bishop. Best used cars in town. How are you, Mr. Bishop? Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I uh, heard the bulletin on the radio, Mr. Matthews, about the murder. I telephoned right away, but you weren't here, so I came right down. A fella came to my place and bought a car this morning that fits that description to a T. Said his name was uh, Richard Price. He had the scar and everything. I remember the scar because I was wondering how he got it. And uh, they were carrying luggage, too, like they were going to take a trip. What do you mean by they? Well, he had his wife with him. Anyway, he said she was his wife. Beautiful blonde girl. Looked like a movie star, you know? Yeah, I'll bet. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Sure, I think so. Anyway, I know I'd identify the woman. All right, forget her. Take a look at these. These two look a lot alike. Minnick and Talbot. I'm not positive, but I think uh, Talbot's your man. Steve Talbot, age 35. He's married. Wife's name, Audrey, age 25. Five feet four, about 110 pounds. Has been known to be blonde, brunette, and redhead. She hasn't missed much. Did time at the Hatchapi. Well, the lady in the jewelry store was positive the man was alone. Well, if it was Talbot, he could have planned to meet her after the job. But if it wasn't Talbot, we'll have to wait till we get a report from the lab. What kind of a car did he buy, Mr. Bishop? Well, it wasn't much of a car, Mr. Matthews, uh, but it was a bargain for the price. I figured they were newlyweds or something, so I'd give them the most for their money. What kind of a car was it? Well, uh, here's the sales slip. I brought it along to make sure. Uh, 1921 two-door sedan, blue-gray, license number KHE424. Thanks. Another roadblock. Alert all units. Highway 11 and 55. Tell them to be on the lookout. Suspect might be driving with a woman. Right. Look, uh, I'm not positive, but uh, if he's going to travel any great distance, I, uh, I don't think he'll make it in that car, Mr. Matthews. Not that I'd knowingly sell a man a defective automobile, uh, but uh, after all, you just get what you pay for, you know what I mean? And this guy, Price, or Talbot, uh, just didn't want to spend much money. <laughs> 
Of course, I could have sold him a more dependable car, but he wasn't interested. He said he wasn't going to do much driving anyway. broke down. Let's give him a hand. Oh, Jim, do you think we should? I mean, you think it's safe to pick up a strange man? Oh, well, he may be in trouble. Pardon me, but uh, I had a little car trouble. I'm in a hurry to catch a plane. Do you have any idea what's the matter? Well, no, I don't. I'm not much at mechanics. I'm a businessman myself. I'm the same way. Well, there's a garage down the highway a few miles. Hop in. Well, I'm afraid I can't wait for repairs. You see, my plane leaves Clovis Field in less than an hour. Take me almost that long to get there if I left now. Well, if you want to leave your car here until you get back from your trip, I can take you up to close. I'm going right by. Well, thanks. I appreciate this. Oh, Mrs. Taylor, is your, uh, your husband here? Well, uh, well, he had an appointment. Uh, he'll be meeting me at noon. I just wanted to check. Okay. Thank you. Minutes after it had been abandoned, Talbot's car was spotted by a cruising highway patrol unit and its location radioed to patrol headquarters. Well, the car was found right here. No place to go on foot in this area. Let's suppose he was going north on 30. We've got a roadblock right here. Well, if the suspect commandeered a vehicle, he should make that roadblock in about 30 minutes. If not, if he's on foot, he should be just about here. Alert all units in this area. Tell them to use extreme caution. He might have hitched a ride. Right. Jim's new job is going to keep him on the road for a year or two. So that's why we invested our nest egg in this trailer. We didn't want to be separated. That's very nice, Mrs. Rogers. Are you married, Mr. Taylor? Yes, yes, I am. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Don't you think so, Mr. Taylor? Yes, yes, I do. We interrupt this program to bring you a further bulletin from the Highway Patrol. The Westbrook holdup murderer has been tentatively identified as Steve Talbot, age 35 years, 5 foot 11, with a distinctive scar on his left cheek. Jim! The suspect is believed to be traveling north on State Highway 30. Okay, mister, pull over to the side of the road. Motorists on State Highway 30 are alerted to be on the lookout for anyone answering Talbot's description. Get out. What are you going to do? I'm going to get to Clovis Field, Mrs. Rogers. Your husband's going to see to that. You lay a hand on Don't her. Don't get heroic, Rogers. Please, Jim, let's do as he says. She's a smart girl. Look, we're going to be in the trailer. If the police should stop you, you haven't seen a thing, you understand? But how can I stop them if they want to look in the trailer? That's your problem. When we get to Clovis Field, Mrs. Rogers is coming in with me to get my wife. After that, you're going to take us to the city. Just like you said, Rogers, marriage is a wonderful thing. I'd hate to see yours end so soon. Come on. <laughs> its two hostages continued its flight to the airport, while the highway patrol concentrated its efforts to stop that flight. Well, we're only about 10 minutes away from the roadblock. If the suspect was headed this way, we'd have heard by now. We've got a figure it's going to take him a couple of minutes to get a ride. Station to 2150. 2150, bye. Crime lab reports prints on safe match those of Steve Talbot. OK, four more units. Talbot's our man. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Well, now that we know for sure that it's Talbot, it makes it easier. Easier? It must be terrible to know you've killed a man. It's not so terrible. Look, 
If we promise not to call the police, will you get out at the airport and let us go? Mrs. Rogers, I'm afraid I can't take a chance of being trapped in a plane. If I get out at the airport, I'll have to kill you both. Margie's slowing down. It's a roadblock. Quick, put on a rope. Remember, if you or your husband try any funny stuff, go on. Something wrong, officer? Just a routine check. May I see your driver's license? Notice anyone along the highway walking or hitchhiking? No, no, sir, I didn't. I see. Anyone in a trailer? No, no one. What's the matter? What's taking so long? Another police car just came up. Check the trailer? I, uh... There's nobody back there. I, I just bought it in Westbrook. I'm headed toward Clark City to pick up my wife. We take a look inside. Just routine. There's nobody in that trailer, honestly. But why should I lie to you? Well, if you're not lying, you shouldn't mind if we take a look. <sighs> wait, wait a minute. I did lie, officer. My, my wife's in the trailer. She didn't feel well, and she's been lying down back there. I didn't want her disturbed. I'm sorry. We're going to have to disturb her. Yes? What is it? Highway Patrol. I'd like to take a look inside. No tricks now. Say you're sick. Just a minute. Hate to disturb you. It's just a routine check. Oh. I was napping when you knocked. I don't feel well. Mind if I take a look inside? I'd rather you wouldn't. I'm, I'm not dressed. Anybody else in there? No. No one. Thanks very much. Okay, you can go now. Thanks, officer. Sounded like he suspects something. He's in there, all right. Radio Clock City. Tell him Talbot's on the way. Stop the next civilian car you see. Stay with the trailer. Don't let it out of your sight. Right. You knew he was in there and you didn't take him? Couldn't take the chance. We've got to protect the girl and get Talbot. Probably had a gun two feet from her head. Now, we know Talbot's going to meet his wife. He's probably going to Clark City. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Clovis Field. That's about 15 miles from here. It's a stop for the local airlines. Let's try it.
car around back. I'll meet you inside. going out of here in the next couple of hours? Yes, we have a flight leaving at uh, 12 o'clock in about five minutes. That gal over there happened to be on it? Yes, that's Mrs. Taylor. She's waiting for her husband. Mrs. Taylor? Mrs. Taylor. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Mrs. Taylor? Yes? I'd like to ask you some questions. Why don't you beat it, mister, before I call a policeman? I am a policeman, Mrs. Talbot. It is Mrs. Talbot, isn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't done anything. Maybe not. Steve has. He killed somebody. You're going to meet him here in a couple of minutes, aren't you? The hunch paid off. Talbot will be here any minute. Keep an eye on her. I'll take cover outside. get my wife. And no tricks. All right, Rogers, get out. I want you where I can see you. We're going in to get my wife, and then you're going to take us to the city. I'll go. Give up. You haven't got a chance. Well, come a step closer, mister. She's dead. Get out of the way. Why did he do that? If Talbot finds out he's in there, he'll kill them both. Let's go after him. Take it easy, Mr. Rogers. Henderson, take that car and follow him, but don't get too close. Are you letting me go? Not you, lady. Just your trailer. Dragging that thing around is like wearing a big sign. We're gonna make better time without it. You just sit here and don't try anything cute. All right, drop it. Take it from here. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll take you back to your husband. That was an awful chance you took. You're taking a bigger one. I never pulled a trailer before. Uh. Here's keys. Thanks. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver.
This is Bradrick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>